the satellite clock even if it's an atomic clock it's also desynchronized with regards to the cell. the speed the signal is not speed of light will be a little bit lower now the distance is not a real distance then we have an uncertainty of error inside my estimation <laughs> Four satellites, four equations, four unknowns to solve for with this distance estimated by the receiver. The receiver is the one in charge of estimating the distance. How? Say, okay, the distance to the satellite will be velocity multiplied by time, speed of light multiplied by t of reception minus time of transmission. This time of reception will be a time of reception in GPS time or Galileo time, or the one in the constellation, plus a delta time of reception from the internal clock of the receiver. The satellite clock, even if it's an atomic clock, it's also desynchronized with regards to the GPS cell. We need somehow to add in the equation the clock bias of the satellite. This time of transmission will be the time of transmission and GPS time scale plus a delta of the time of transmission in GPS time scale. This is negative here. This is a negative here. It means that here will be negative. I have to add here somehow minus C delta T I satellite tra at the transmission time. And this is what we call bias of the satellite with regards to the GPS time scale, for example. This is something that is different per line of sight, because this is coming from, it's a prop, satellite property, it's not a receiver property. Then, if we add more equations, we have more unknowns, because each equation I add, I have more clocks to estimate. Then somehow, someone has to give me this value. Somehow, I cannot estimate it. And the other assumption was, the speed, the signal, is not speed of light, will be a little bit lower, because we have to go through different effects. I have to add here another value, which is a delta D. A delta D because of the this velocity of the signal. If I have a distance that is not really the real distance, because we have a satellite clock, a distance because the signal is not traveling at speed of light, the real intersection between both spheres is not really, it's not the true position anymore. Now, the distance is not a real distance, then we have an uncertainty of error inside my estimation. But it's not only this. Satellite position in my equation is given also to me by the satellite, by the navigation message. Then, if the position of the satellite has an error, the volume will be still even more deforming. Then I will have even more uncertainty in my solution. Then we have several errors. We have the, the satellite error position, we have the clock of the satellite, and we have this pseudo distance because of the speed of light is not constant along the travel. But we have another effect very important for my solution that is that we call the geometry. Let's imagine that we have satellites that are really close to each other. Do you think that this equation will be independent? From the mathematical point of view, if I have, a, I have two satellites in the same point, this will be more or less the same equation. Then, to solve for this equation, we will have some bad conditioning in my system. Then, this bad conditioning is coming from the geometry of the satellites. There are several things that make my error increase and increase and increase. Then, satellite position error, the pseudo distance, the satellite clock error, and also the geometry of the satellites. For example, let's imagine I want to estimate a, an airplane position with all the satellites that are spread on the space. And I have all the satellites in the same point. In the second case is like I have the same equation all the time. It's not adding uh, any much value to my observability. What do you think will be better or worse? The geometry in the horizontal domain or the vertical domain? In GNSS, what do you think we are estimating better, the horizontal error or the vertical error? The observability of my system is much better in the horizontal domain because I have satellites spread ar around the horizontal domain than in the vertical because I don't have satellites in the other side of the Earth. From the horizontal point of view, we are always better than from the vertical point of view. Vertically, the geometry in the vertical domain is worse. Then, the objective of a GNSS constellation is not longer to have only four satellites in view, but to have four satellites in view with good geometry. If at the end I have four satellites in view, but the geometry of the satellites is very awful, 
I will, my solution will explode. The indicator of the geometry is what we call the DOP, the illusion of precision. Then in some places of the Earth, what happened? You are in the Atlantic Ocean, and sometimes the constellation is designed in such a way that we have four satellites, but they are very, very, very bad geometric conditions, and we have what we call chimneys. Boom! My error explodes. Explodes to hundreds and thousands of kilometers. If I have 10 satellites in view, is it better to have 10 satellites or only 4 satellites for my solution? You don't have more unknowns. The unknowns are the same, but you have more equations. Our receiver will use as many as satellites as possible in their solution. Yes, Instead of looking for the 4 that are the best geometry, we take all of them at the same time.